Scientists of Reddit, what are some scary scientific discoveries that most of the public is unaware of? Many people may be silent carriers for mad cow disease and won't know for another decade or so. MAD cow disease from the 1980s to 1990s was due to cows being fed the remains of other animals. People then ate their beef and consumed prions, a protein that can destroy the human brain. It's thought that many people still might carry prions, but won't know until they start experiencing the symptoms of creutzfeldt jakob disease or bovine spongiform encephalopathy, which might be 10 to 50 years after consuming the contaminated meat. It has a long incubation period. You can also contract the prions from blood transfusions, which is why so many UK citizens from that time period still aren't allowed to donate blood. Once the symptoms begin, cognitive impairment, memory loss, hallucinations, etc., you usually die within months. There is no cure or treatment. A couple interesting facts and people and animals have an immunity to prion disease. This was first discovered in the tribes of New Guinea, who were known cannibals. Some contracted prion disease by eating the brains and spinal cords of either enemies or dead relatives. The tribes that practiced it all ate the meat, but only a small number of people would come down with the disease, Kuru. It seems the immunity is genetic, and people who are more heterozygotic fare better than the more homozygotic individuals. The same immunity can be observed in cattle, where some cows had various prion diseases injected directly into air brains, and two-thirds would die within three years and one-third would never develop the disease and remain healthy for the duration of their normal lifespan, although upon autopsy they did test positive for the disease. We currently have a prion disease known as chronic wasting disease, spreading through the deer, moose and elk population. The disease allegedly spreads through the soil. It is endemic throughout Colorado, Wyoming, down through North Texas, most of the Midwest and Northeast. The only places not affected at this point are the northern reaches of Canada, the West Coast, and the Deep South Florida. So far there have been no confirmed cases of human transmission of CWD. However, tests have been conducted and the disease has been successfully transmitted to cows with direct injections. It hasn't been confirmed, but it should follow that if BSE can jump to both humans and deer, and CWD can jump from deer to cows as has been confirmed by recent studies, then it should follow that CWD can jump from deer to humans too. There are varying opinions on the safety of eating CWD-infected meat, and since it has a long incubation period, it's hard to tell if the deer is infected to begin with. There are millions of people who eat wild elk, moose, and deer, and a fair number of them, maybe a third, are eating meat that definitively is, or might possibly be, infected with CWD. There is a possibility that there are also herds of beef, bison, goats, horses, and sheep that are also infected with CWD. Also, if the hypothesis of soil-based transmission is correct, then CWD could also be running through our poultry, dairy, grain, and vegetable supplies too. As a side note, personal opinion hypothesis prion disease is one of GD's the universe's mysterious ways of making sure mammals don't inbreed or cannibalize each other or make other animals cannibalize each other. Because that seems to be a common thread, cannibalism transmits it, possibly, creates it it's just a misfolded protein, and inbreeding takes away resistance. At least, that's the case with BSE and Kur. We don't know enough about CWD yet to understand how it functions for me to say it has the same purpose in the universe. The world has 70% less insects on average than it did 40 years ago. We really are coming up on our silent spring. For the people saying there are less pests, those aren't the ones we worried about. Insect pollinators are vital to so many crops, we could be facing serious problems with certain food supplies soon. In recent years China has had issues with apple and pear crops to the point where some regions have had to pollinate crops by hand. Also, insects form lower blocks of many food webs, and their disappearance will spell trula for higher trophic levels. About eight years ago, a friend of mine was working on the technology to allow you to feel things through your smartphone. Not just the emotion of anger that you feel every day through Twitter, but the textures of fabrics of clothing you are thinking about buying. He moved to Boston and we lost touch, but I think about his job every single week. First one, the vast overuse of antibiotics has led to superbugs that are antibiotic resistant. At the same time, the diversity of microbes within the human has drastically decreased in first world countries. This leads to a correlated rise in allergies and gastrointestinal diseases. As we use more antibiotics and antibacterial viral products, then biodiversity of microbes decrease and superbugs have a much easier pathway of invading the body. With a very biodiverse microbiome, your resident microbes will try to fight off these infections much easier. We need to focus on helping bacteria, not killing all of it. Not a scientist, but I will still take the time to mention something that scares the shit out of me, I only found about a month ago, and I don't think a lot of people are aware of, but probably should be. Back in 1946-58, the US tested 60 nuclear weapons on the Marshall Islands and buried the nuclear leftover waste and soil in a 30 feet deep cavern sealing it with a concrete dome, the dome is cracking, and now it's leaking into the ocean, and surprise surprise it's not fixing itself, and the people responsible are essentially ignoring it, or saying it is the Higgs boson, which was hypothesized decades ago was discovered via the Large Hadron Collider, its real-life discovery proved that it's what gives mass to everything. But there is a non-zero chance that a Higgs boson can drop to a lower energy state. 
And because of the law of entropy, it's the preferred state to decay to a lower energy state if possible. The influence of a low energy state boson would kick off a chain reaction causing other Higgs bosons to drop to a lower energy state. The problem with this is that, if a Higgs boson drops to a lower energy state then it can't give mass to things anymore dot which has universal implications when mass doesn't have mass anymore. It's theorized that the infinitesimal small probability of this occurring could lead to a circumstance where the universe as we know it disappears. Essentially it would occur like an absolute void progressing through the universe, low energy state Higgs bosons infecting any other Higgs boson they come across. Maybe the closest thing to a Thanos snap, but it causes everything to disappear in the universe, but only at the speed of light rather than instantaneously. Known link between untreated hearing loss and cognitive decline i.e. dementia.eta, keyword is untreated. If you previously had normal hearing and it started slipping, please see an ant and audiologist. Hearing aids have come down in cost and improved in function aesthetics even in the last 10 years. If you are a veteran in the US, the VI will normally cover your hearing aids. I if you have had hearing loss since childhood, you're not one of the ones I'm worried about. You have either learned sign language to keep you from being isolated due to your hearing loss and or you have learned how to use hearing aids cochlear implants to keep you from being isolated due to your hearing loss. The link is really between communication and cognition, not the physical ability to hear. It's just that in people who previously had normal hearing, if they don't do anything it will impair their communication and in turn affect their cognition. Artificial General Intelligence, Augie. In other words a digital computer that is superhuman in all cognitive tasks. Humans are imbued by evolution with a sort of general learning algorithm. But it's running in a very slow biological computer, with low input output speed, talking, tapping thumbs, reading etc. Once we can implant that algorithm in silicon, a computer chip, there's a good chance it'll be superhuman in a matter of days or less. Sort of on the level of intelligence gap you might feel between you and a mosquito. At that point, it doesn't even have to be malicious to destroy all of humanity. As Max Tegmark has put it, the real risk with artificial general intelligence isn't malice but competence. A superintelligent AI would be extremely good at accomplishing its goals, and if those goals are aligned with ours, we're in trouble. The implications of this would be all encompassing. It would change the whole game. And many top experts believe it could happen within the next 10 years.